2.3, the ideal gas equation. The Hindenburg airship was originally designed in the 1930s to use helium as its lifting gas rather than hydrogen. But the only source of larger volumes of helium was the USA and they refused to sell it to Germany because of Hitler's aggressive policies. The airship was therefore made to use hydrogen. It held about 210,000 meters cubed of hydrogen gas, but this volume varied with temperature and pressure. The volume of a given mass of any gas is not fixed. It changes with pressure and temperature. However, there are a number of simple rel relationships for a given mass of gas that connect the pressure, temperature and volume of a gas. Boyle's, Boyle's law says the product of pressure and volume is a constant as long as the temperature remains constant. So you have pressure P times volume V equals a constant. Charles law says the volume is proportional to the temperature as long as the pressure remains constant. So volume V is directly proportional to temperature T. And volume V divided by temperature T is equal to a constant. Guy Lussac's law says the pressure is proportional to the temperature as long as the volume remains constant. So pressure P is directly proportional to temperature T and pressure P divided by temperature T equals a constant. Combining all these relationships give us the equation pressure P times volume V divided by temperature T equals constant for a fixed mass of gas. Which brings us to the ideal gas equation. In a one mole of gas, the constant is given the symbol R and is called the gas constant. For n moles of gas, pressure P times volume V equals number of moles n times gas constant R times temperature T or PV equals nRT. The value of R is 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. This is the ideal gas equation. No gases obey it exactly, but at room temperature and pressure, it holds quite well for many gases. It is often useful to imagine a gas which obeys the equation perfectly, an ideal gas. When using the ideal gas equation, consistent units must be used. If you want to calculate n, the number of moles, p must be in pascals, v must be in meters, meters cubed, t must be in kelvin, and r must be in joules per kelvin per mole. Using the ideal gas equation, you can calculate the volume of one mole of gas at any temperature and pressure you want. Since none of the terms in the equation refers to a particular gas, this volume will be the same for any gas. This may seem very unlikely at first sight, but it is the space between the gas molecules that accounts for the volume of a gas. Even the largest gas particles are extremely small compared with the space between the particles themselves. So rearranging the ideal gas equation to find a volume gives V equals nRT divided by P. The worked example tells us, tells you that the volume of a mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure is approximately 24,000 centimeters cubed or 24 decimeters cubed. For example, one mole of sulfur dioxide gas SO2 mass 64.1 gram has the same volume as one mole of a hydrogen gas H2 mass only 2 grams. In a similar way, pressure can be found using P equals nRT divided by V. If you try to rearrange the equation P equals nRT so that n is on the left hand side, you get n equals PV divided by RT. If T, P and V are known, then you can find N. If you know the number of moles present in any given mass of gas, you can find the mass of one mole of gas and this tells us the relative molecular mass.